to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Make up your mind to discover and to fulfill your assignments. Now, we don't have all the time, but can I have two or three people here? Just any two, no, you, you see, just two or three people here. Let me use someone, please give me anything to use, a rod, a mic, just anything, a book, anything at all. Now all of you stand, watch this. You stand here, you stand here, watch this. This is a baton. Please stand in front here, sir. Stand in front there. You stand in front of him. Now watch this. This is a baton. And God has given it to him. Hold it, sir. My friend, all of you stretch your hands backward, ready to receive. This man, if he runs his destiny well, he will be able to hand it over to this man. Is that true? If this man fails, run well, sir, and hand it over to him. You see that? His efficiency has made another person to fulfill destiny. But you, sir, refuse to run. This man has refused to discover his place and run with that baton. He's wasting the destiny of another person because he has refused to run. Every time you refuse to find your place in life, someone else is a relay. You are not the only one running. If God raised you to be a man of God, all the pastors that were supposed to come up after you and under you because of your inability to answer the call you are punishing another man's destiny if god has raised you to be a kingdom financier he raised you to be a financier so that that church will now be built because of your refusal to obey your assignment that church is never built and the souls that should be saved in that church never come to Jesus. There are implications when you do not fulfill destiny. Please give him back again. Let's repeat it now. This represents the generation of our grandfathers and great grandfathers in the faith. They handed it over. Give it to him. There is a generation running with this now. Now, my friend, when he gives it to you, refuse to collect it. Now, he's giving it to him. This is what most of our generation are doing. Collect it, take the mantle of healing, the mantle of breakthrough, collect it. And we're saying, no, we're busy typing phones, typing internet, making all kinds of things. Collect this, time is going. Destinies are suffering. And this man is refusing. My friend, walk away and leave him this is what is happening our fathers are passing this baton and saying young people a time will come you will be the one on the stage prepare collect this mantle collect this baton in business in ministry but you are refusing but in this conference my brother run back and come and collect this run with speed and come and pick it this is what is happening to someone now lift your voice in one minute and declare i must fulfill destiny go ahead and pray go ahead and pray from the depth of your heart i must find my place in life find my place in destiny and fulfill the same name we pray for in Jesus name we pray 
I've given you three decisions now. Number one, to make exceptional spiritual progress. Number two, to contend for superior belief systems. Number three, the decision to discover and fulfill your God-given assignment. Number four, are we still here? The fourth decision, according to 3 John 1 verse 2, 3 John 1 verse 2, the decision to be healthy. Now look up. This may look like a very simple decision, but it's a very, very serious decision. The decision to be healthy. Your physical well-being is important for the fulfillment of your destiny because no spirit is a legal occupant in the earth without a body you need a healthy body it says beloved i wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health prosper and be in health the decision to be healthy can i tell you this there are many people today who are 40 years but respectfully speaking are looking 80 years because they spend their lives deteriorating their health carelessness over their bodies eating anything drinking anything i myself did not used to pay that much attention to my health i was not careless with my health but i didn't give it that level of intention especially those who work in miracles signs and wonders usually they ignore their health just because the anointing flows through them to others you must be careful you have a responsibility under god to walk in health it is the reason why vices like smoking and drinking and liquor and all these kinds of things are dangerous because it's a way of mismanaging your health a body has thou prepared for me if you do not have a body even if you have a vision it will not come to pass did you hear what i said if you do not have a body even if you have a vision it will not come to pass your vision needs a body to find expression that means from today you must make a decision that I am going to be healthy. Part of the ways that you choose life is to choose to be healthy. You wouldn't believe it, I'm not a medical doctor, but I can tell you this. Your health starts from the discipline to take clean water. Clean water alone can save you many, many years of degrading your health. The moment God begins to bless you, you get a job or money begins to come don't just invest in clothes invest in your health if you buy a nice cloth a nice designer in a body that is dying soon people will come and carry it away because you will be dead hear me one time i went to minister in this nation and one of the fathers of faith drew me into his office and he made a statement that I would never forget it was a powerful conference and he drew me into his office and he said my son let me teach you something pay attention to your health he said Africans kill their prophets And it was it it made such an impact in my life now it's good to stretch yourself don't be lazy but you must know when you stretch yourself beyond limits there are many people today it is not demons that are destroying their health it is just because they do not pay attention can I tell you this haven't encouraged you to be hard-working let me be sincere with you when you are tired rest when you are hungry eat learn this especially for young people because we are surrounded by so many people who want to show that you can stretch in the spirit 
we we derive a lot of pride from showing that you have stamina in the spirit there are people today who have ulcer and it's because they did not know how to fast with wisdom there are people today who are destroying themselves there are people today who have gone to pray and stretch themselves beyond proportion and it affected their brains they have bipolar right now they are in the hospital there is a balance to everything the bible says to do everything with moderation pay attention to your health do not feel embarrassed and don't feel less of a christian if you are investing in your health if you are with me say amen humorously i'm seeing that there are meals being served while the message is going on and some of you are almost embarrassed you don't want to collect it collect it oh collect it oh oh they are not serving oh i see oh they are just positioned don't don't collect it now <laughs> but when it's time to collect it collect it yes after the message you have it i know some of you will feel like you are falling your hands spiritually how could i be so anointed when jesus was hungry he ate when jesus was tired he slept please eat and rest in this kingdom we live by bread and words bread and words not word alone bread and words Please sit down. We have to wrap up. Are you learning? Now, very quickly, number five. The fifth quality decision you must make in order to emerge as a champion and influence is the decision to be financially independent write it down i hope you are not shouting just because you like money the decision to be financially independent you know can i be honest with you many people shy away from the reality of this because and i know why usually when it has to do with the issue of finances there are two groups in the body of christ there are those who ignore it and say it's not important don't worry you just serve god he will sort your life and then there are those who almost it is like an extension of lust and carnality and everything is money 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 from start to finish both are wrong but i can tell you based on the authority of scripture the decision to be financially independent is a noble decision and it's also a spiritual decision Proverbs chapter 22 verse 7 may you never forget this scripture for the rest of your life in Jesus name Proverbs chapter 22 verse 7 why do you need to contend for financial independence here is one of the reasons the Bible says the rich ruled over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender did you hear that a rich man will rule over the poor even if he's a poor prayer warrior even if he's a poor fasting giant for as long as you are poor you will never be able to taste the corridors of power and influence it takes economic empowerment to lift the name of jesus the name of jesus is very heavy it takes resources to lift it up not join the ignorance where people find comfort in believing that everything will be all right if you are not financially empowered what we challenge in the body of Christ is lost an affinity towards material things not the availability of resources by the time money becomes a God to you by the time you become obsessed with money even to the detriment of your relationship with Jesus now there is a problem materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of materials on your relationship with Jesus and you don't need to have money to be materialistic 
there are many poor people who are materialistic they don't just have the money to manifest it yet please pay attention to this there are many people who are called of god today but they are unable to do much for the kingdom this conference right now is happening because there are financial resources to drive the conference it is not only because jesus is here jesus is here and we are grateful but what if the gen and the sound system goes off and you cannot hear what if the lights are out this magnificent um ground that we all are sitting here it took resources to make it happen as i have toured around this amazing camp i have seen all kinds of projects ongoing it takes resources if you embrace poverty you will also embrace weakness can i tell you this make up your mind that what my parents could not give me they may be sincere people they did the best with what they knew to do but in the name of jesus i'll be able to give my children what i did not receive don't transfer the same pain and hardship to your children make up your mind that under my watch the house of the lord will never suffer because these hands will bring resources for the lifting of the name of jesus the decision to be financially independent write this for reference as we prepare to wrap up ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13 to 6 i'm telling you this scripture is a very powerful and prophetic scripture ecclesiastes chapter 9 maybe we should read it i know our time is up but let me just read it very quickly fish ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13 we are reading just four verses 13 to 16. ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13 to 16. the bible shows us in a very graphic way the danger of not contending for financial independence this wisdom have i seen also under the sun and it seemed great unto me what is the wisdom read on with me now it says there was a little city and few men within it and there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it 15. now there was found in it a poor wise man who was found in that city a poor wise man and he by his wisdom delivered the city yet no man remembered that same poor man it's in your bible 16 then said i wisdom is better than strength nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not here it takes wisdom and wealth to be had Are we learning make up your mind that you are going to walk in the reality of the blessings of the Lord not for some competitive selfish carnal reason no I am telling you this when God grants do you know we are not teaching on finances here but many of the people who talk on finances with, with all due respect largely many people are not getting it the way it should be taught this is why it keeps fueling carnality and lust in people you prosper even as your soul prospers when there is anything wrong with your soul everything you have gathered or acquired is nonsense but let me give you this there are only two assignments of money in the life of an individual number one the first assignment of financial resources is as a tool for time redemption the first assignment of money in your life is to redeem time the unit of destiny is time you can use money to buy time number two the second assignment of money 
in the life of a believer a kingdom-minded believer is for efficiency so money only has two assignments in a believer's life time redemption and efficiency if god grants you resources and you buy a car what is that car doing redeeming time that's it if god grants you an opportunity and you move from a tenant to a landlord it has only helped to make your life efficient instead of smuggling six children in one room now you have a three four five bedroom you can even create a prayer room you can create all kinds of things so it gives you the convenience to live an efficient life everybody say time redemption one more time say time redemption say efficiency this is why believers desire the availability of financial resources for time redemption and for efficiency if you are able to pay the school fees of your children without thinking about it and you can send them to any school without the psychological stress of raising school fees one naira one naira per time it has helped your life to be efficient so you can focus on the things of god as a man of god when god blesses you financially he has given you time so you can lock yourself for three days seeking his face and not worry about bills efficiency when people are taught prosperity from a correct kingdom perception or perspective they become blessed and their hearts are never connected to those things finally have we been blessed so far the only promise you are going to give me is that you will use everything that i'm teaching you here that that the next time god will grant us the grace to see when i look at you where you used to be i will not be able to find you there again that you will be a thousand times over the final decision pay attention our time is up the sixth is the decision to build quality destiny relationships write it down ecclesiastes chapter 4 from verse 9 to 12 please give us that scripture the decision to build quality destiny relationships can i tell you this the command be fruitful also means be relational because the only way to be fruitful is through relationships it takes a husband and his wife to have a child two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor we are reading to verse 12 verse 10 now two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor verse 10 says for if they fall the one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone the key word is alone when he falleth for he had not another to help him up uh-huh two more verses again if two lie together they have heat but how can one be warm alone verse 12 i wish you can see it for us to read together verse 12 and if one prevail against him two shall withstand him and a threefold cord is not quickly or easily broken look at me one of the greatest things that you can do with your life and the times that god has given you is to invest in building quality relationships can i be honest with you many people do not have relationships that were intentionally built many people have circumstantial relationships circumstances just brought certain people into your life there are three levels of relationships number one there are general relationships you meet people every day and the bible mandates you love them believers non-believers alike you meet them every day number two there are seasonal relationships for instance your classmates your schoolmates within the time you are together in that institution or that training taking that course you are together and you may be friends but the third and the highest level they are called destiny relationships or covenant relationships 
these are people who believe what you believe the foundational pillars of your convictions are also what they believe and you have a covenant of fellowship that you are going to be there for one another through the thick and thin. you will not just be there to stand together that when they are on the ground you will come and stand by them and help them and lift them can i tell you this woe betides a man if everybody around you is a psychophant just looking for your money or your titles or anointing they will tell you because men are intrinsically selfish however there are still sincere people and my prayer is not just that you pray and say god give me one be one first hallelujah look up please we're wrapping up when jesus walked upon the earth for as long as he was celebrity jesus there were crowds looking for him some were looking for him for food some were eyeing all kinds of things hoping that one day when he becomes king of kings and lord of lords he will put james and peter all kinds of motives but when Jesus handed himself to die, all of them ran away. When Jesus was going to Golgotha, my question, where was blind Bartimaeus? Where was the woman with the issue of blood? Where was even Lazarus who was raised from the dead? Everybody ran away. Can I be honest with you? You must obtain the grace and the courage at this level in life to edit your relationships. Don't treat everybody the same. They are not the same. Categorize your relationships into outer court, inner court, and most holy place. Not everybody should have that kind of access to your life. Are you learning wisdom here? Someone comes into your life and in five minutes, you've told him everything about your destiny. You've told him everything about your past. You've told him that, oh, your dad has a problem with your mom. And tomorrow they go around and betray you and backstab you and destroy you you need wisdom it is not every visitor that comes to your house that you take to your bedroom no there are visitors who will stand at the gate there are others who will come to the living room but there are others you can literally take them to your bedroom and sit down because you know that even if you are in prison they will come and stand with you and say we die together can i be sincere with you this is one of the lessons that I have learned, respectfully speaking, in the life of our fathers of faith. They may not have many people around their lives, but my goodness, God has given them the gift of men. There are men who will stay like the mighty men of David in the cave of Adullam. Let me ask you a question as I round up. If you are in trouble today, God forbid, is there anybody in your life that you can call by 2 a.m and say sincerely there is an issue with my rent now it's not like i am jealous and the person says over my dead body for as long as you are alive i'm alive i will not see you go through this hear me if there is nobody like that in your life you are sitting on a time bomb can i be i want to be honestly even when Saul wanted to kill David and frustrated him, David said, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? I have learned this as a lesson, gleaning from the wisdom of the fathers. Can I be honest with you? This is an assignment to everyone here. Write a list of the five most important men in your life people you know today who love you and will sacrifice anything for you invest in those relationships don't generalize and treat everybody the same way no there are people today if you call and say i i need i need five hundred thousand, they will tell you well i will help you how could you put them in the same category with someone who can stab you with a knife even if they give you learn wisdom i'm teaching you this 
there are people today if you call them and say look i see that lust is already growing in me pride is already growing in me they'll say no not when i'm there let's declare a three-day fast i will stand with you i will pray with you can i be honest with you as you are rising in life and in leadership you must start praying not for a crowd but for this man lord from the crowd select this man bring them to my life there are men who will vow and say even if you go to be with the lord today your children will not beg for bread when they are alive can i be honest with you there are many of our parents in old age today they did not spend their days searching for quality destiny relationships and investing in it and you would see some of them move and they will tell you i lived in us for 10 years i know this one i know this one but they are still in a position today where not one of their children can have a job anything money can buy relationships can also buy relationships are currencies don't use money alone to buy things use relationships to buy things this is one lesson i've learned in ministry as we pray man of god young man young woman hear the word of the lord it is time for you to build quality relationships this is one of the reason why god brings a convergence of a conference like this so that you can have men and women some of you your destiny helper is the person seated near you he may not be wearing the kind of shoe and the kind of cloth you see be careful where you look down on people you may be looking down on the next 10 years of your life learn to honor men learn to respect people respect those above you respect your contemporaries respect your subordinates and you have bought the future dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline